hi guys welcome back to the channel we are going to talk about the bitting or the cutting of the yam into sets now as we talked about we are going to cut them into small pieces now this is where we are going to go so here we are the first piece and we are going to sort of try to get it as evenly as possible now that's what you do you get it into the first set like that and this is what a mozzarella yam looks like on the inside now this here is our ash and to stop it from rotting and to get it to cure as fast as possible and to st also to stop it from rotting when you are um, planting it we there you go and that will dry it out a little bit now <coughs> you need to have about an inch or so of yam on, on each side so to begin because this is not round, I'm going to get this little piece here first. And as I get it, I get some ash on it. And that should dry it out. Now, this looks like a fairly nice piece, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna get that cut. And then we are going to See if we can get so with this one they're approximately approximately the same size so and then there you go and that is ash right there And it, it is as simple as that. Now, this is the side that will spout and grow. And generally, you will have only a single growth coming out of one of these sections. So to have the yam mini set and to have the yam grow properly, you do need to have some yam, some actual yam on this side. Because this will provide the nutrient originally for the growth of the nodes and for the growth the first sprouts until it then begins to send out shoots and um, and then it will begin to take up nutrients from the soil so here we have out of this one piece here we got we got five decent pieces now as I said before you are going to set each one of these and each one of these small pieces should give you a yam anywhere between one and five or six pounds on the extreme end and as i said each piece is the entirety of the yam is is edible so and of course it is important to get the ash on this side here because that dries it out and prevents it from rotting now next we are going to show you how to prepare the bed and there are many different ways of preparing the bed the bed can be prepared on the ground which is not the best option um, and it is not the best option because when it's on the ground it is susceptible to all sort of pests and primarily among them will be slugs and snails and they will eat the young shoots and so it's not the best way but there is as usual us being jamaican there is as usual a solution and that solution is ash now i could give you a demonstration let us say that this is your bed right here 
and you want to prevent slugs and snails from getting to your bed you are going to take your ash and you are going to prov simply make a little surround your bed with ash in this manner and as long as you have your ash enough ash around it like this then snow, snails and slugs will not be able to get to it because being snails and slugs they ride on a bed of slime and they are incapable of generating enough slime to overcome the, all this ash that is there so you will not find snails and slugs attacking your young shoots with that being said there are other critters that will in fact attack if it's on the ground and so that is why preparing the bed on the ground is not the best option having an elevated bed is the best option but if you are simply preparing a small amount like what I am doing then you can go ahead and um, and prepare your bed on the ground because it really is not that difficult for you to reapply your ash around it every day or you know to clear up around the area to prevent critters from getting to it okay so we are going to show you next how to prepare the bed